come follow me, right? Now, in Jewish culture, when a rabbi says, come follow me, it actually means come, you can be just like me. So what does the ministry of Jesus look like, right? What was Jesus known for in his ministry? Anybody? Healing the sick. Say that one more time. Healing the sick. Healing. What else? Deliverance of demons. Deliverance. Who wants to write for me? Stephanie, you want to write? Yeah, all right. <laughs> okay, amen. So healing, deliverance, right? What else was Jesus known for? Let's talk about his ministry. Compassion. Compassion. What else? Love. Teaching. Love. Teaching. Now, the thing about Jesus is he wasn't just about words, right? He backed up everything he said with actions. So the first thing we said, healing. What kind of healings did Jesus do? All of them. Give me an example of one. Gene. Oh. Uh, the lame man. He what happened lame. with him? He was lying by the pool and complained that nobody, he had nobody there to put him in and Jesus was like standing right there. Mm. And so Jesus told him, rise, take up your bed and walk. And he walked. And lepers and two came out and said, thank God. What, what happened with the lepers? Go show yourself. As he went. They were healed as they were going to the priest. As he went. So with the leper, Jesus said to him, be thou clean. Mm -hmm. So in all of this that we're talking about, did Jesus pray? Do, do those sound like the prayers that we usually say? Mm -hmm. Jesus' prayer was like, be thou clean. Mm -hmm. Jesus' prayer was like, pick up your bed and walk. Mm -hmm. Jesus' prayer was like, uh, your sin has been forgiven, mm -hmm. right? Your faith has made you whole. Your faith has made you whole. What's the more of them? Your faith has made you whole. Go in peace. These are the prayers of Jesus. So different than what we pray when we're praying for the sick. But so a miracle happens just like that. It's supernatural. It happens instantly. Healings, a lot of times, they, they, they're over time. Like, again, with the, the leper, Jesus told him to go. Go and talk to the priest, and then they would be healed. So I want to talk about the character of Jesus. What, what was he like? Humble. Humble. Did people like being around him? Why? How did he draw people? Love. Love. The word says, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. And it's so interesting to me because we have a lot of Christians who, because um, the word also says, he who has friends shows himself friendly. But we have a lot of Christians who don't come across real nice. Well. <laughs> so again, back to Jesus. He was humble. He got low. Even going back to the woman, um, there's a story, the woman that was, thank you, Becca. The, the woman who was about to be stoned, she had all these people accusing her of stuff that she had done. Mary. Mary. And Jesus comes, and he gets low. He goes down, and that's, that's, he's like that. He talks straight to you, eye to eye. He's not going to hover over you and uh, make you feel, even though he, he is it. But he's not going to talk to you like, oh, I'm so much better. I'm so No, he gets low. And what's so interesting about this story to me is when he got down there to talk to her, and he said to the people, whoever doesn't have sin, cast the first stone, they all walk away. I'm like, I know Jesus is going to tell her, like, you know you shouldn't have been doing what you was doing. You know, now you know you was wrong. But that's the thing. People already know the mess they're in. They already know what's going on with them. It's just like Mona mentioned. We're, we're there to celebrate who people are, how God sees them. Yes. I just wanted to add that he was obedient to what his father told him to do. He was, he was obedient to what his father said. He what only what he his father said. Okay. He'll say Amen. What he, said. <laughs> he said only, amen. <laughs> so Jesus is talking the way the father talks, right? Yes. He also talks in parables, so it's like depending on who he's speaking to, he mm -hmm. does it in a way that they can understand. Mm -hmm. That's good. Amen. Jesus was also full of grace and full of truth. So even going back to the gay person, right? I feel like the people that, because it's interesting because Jesus wasn't half grace, half truth.
truth. He was complete truth, so he knew all the truth about the person, but gave them complete grace. And I feel like the people that are hardest to give the grace to are the people we know. Right? The people in our family. You, you keep doing that, and I keep telling, you keep coming to me, talking to me about it. Right? But again, it's about the Lord's truth. How, how is he looking at that person? How is he seeing them? Right? Okay. So we talked about the miracles. We talked about his character. So what was his secret? How did Jesus do all this stuff? How did Jesus act this way? He was fully God, but fully man. So what was his secret? He stayed connected to his father. He stayed connected to his father. And the Lord started telling me, with outreaches, with healing, with the prophetic, all of that stuff, he's like, we want formula because we're resisting intimacy. We want a list of, okay, you say this, and, and the blind person is healed. You do this, and the lame person walks. You say this, and that lady with the blood issue, that person with the skin condition, no. He's like, come be with me. Again, the very first thing we said, John 14, 16, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. So that's why when Jesus is healing and doing these miracles, he just saying this stuff. Because he spent his alone time with the Father, right? Like, like uh, Arthur said, only saying what he heard the Father say, only doing what he saw the Father do. In fact, I want to show you all what this looked like for Jesus. I need three volunteers. So Jesus comes up to this blind man. Now, good thing the man was blind because here you got Jesus, you know, getting ready to spit in the man's eyes. <laughs> Foolish. 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 That's the silliest thing anybody that never heard this man blind. You reaching down, grabbing him. <laughs> but this is how he is. And so it's up to us to be childlike. The word of wisdom is a divine revelation of the will, plan, or purpose of God for a specific situation. Yeah. Not our opinion or good advice, yeah. but it's often directional in nature on what should be done in a situation. The word of knowledge, a specific fact about a person place or event not obtained through natural senses, a name, occupation, past history. Hey, were you in a car accident? Or, you know, yeah, I was. That's what, you know. We talked about the woman at the well. Jesus told her her whole story. Mm -hmm. She had been with all these. That's, that's word of knowledge. So the other thing is uh, prophetic senses. The same way we have natural senses, uh, the Holy Spirit uses our prophetic senses. Um, so spiritual sight, hearing, smelling, touch, um, and taste. The one that I've operated um, in is uh, touch, in this impressions where I feel I'm, uh, a pain impressed upon me that I know is not my pain. Am I always right? Absolutely not, right? But I step out on faith with it. 